I think we'll go ahead and get started at 6 o'clock. Um, I'm Jerry Moore, Planning and Development Director. I'll let my staff introduce themselves. My name is Emily Zant. I'm a planner. And I'm Amelia Schoenemann. I'm a planner. We're here to talk about home businesses, so we want to thank you for your participation and your interest. Um, our department developed, developed an outreach program, and we've been working on a lot of things since last year, ordinance amendments and special projects. and so. We think it's important to reach out to the general public and communicate to you about what those things are in detail. So um, again, what we're talking about tonight is home businesses. We're going to provide some background information with regard to them. We're going to go through the regulations. In 2018, the Board of Supervisors adopted an amendment uh, which provides some relief to home businesses that we want to talk about that we're pretty excited about. And then more importantly, we want to hear from you. We want to hear about any concerns or questions that you have about the previous requirements and the new amendment that we adopted. Um, and then two, we've actually rented this room or reserved the room for an hour and a half so we can provide one-on-one -on -one assistance uh, for you as well. So um, I'll just kind of give some background information. The Home Business Ordinance uh, was a part of the 1958 land development regulations, so it's been in effect um, since we've established zoning in the county. We have 57 known home businesses. Primarily, what we deal with is the unincorporated area of the county. So if you have friends or relatives, or if you have a neighbor maybe that's running a home business, um, have them contact us if you, if you think that, that we don't have a permit for them. We'd be happy to talk to them about what that process entails. Um, for the most part, to run a home business in the county, there has to be a dwelling on the property. And, and one person, at least one person, or the family who resides in the home has to be a part of or operate that home business. Um, and then it, uh, Emily's going to go through our regulations, but you're permitted up to one additional person who doesn't reside in the home that can be a part, that can participate in the, in the home business. So you can run a home business in an agricultural district, um, either in the dwelling or in an accessory structure. You're limited, though, up to 49% of the square footage of your house if you're going to operate it in your house. Or you can apply that home business or operate that home business in an accessory structure. But it's one accessory structure. But there's no limit on how much of that space can be used for the home. You can also operate in a residential district, so like an R1, R2, but you're limited to operating the home business in the actual dwelling itself. And again, that 49% um, applies, no more than 49% of the square footage of the house. Um, we start everything with a permit. Emily's going to go through what that permit looks like. It's a one page, pretty simple um, application. Uh, we ask for a narrative to kind of explain what your home business is. Um, we ask for a site plan sketch showing your parcel, showing the footprint of the existing buildings, um, and maybe an interior layout sketch. These are things that homeowners can submit just to kind of show how those spaces are being used, um, whether it's the first level, second level, or the, or the upper level. Our review process is usually about five business days. We try to get a response back. It's pretty common for us to um, have questions when we receive the application and the submittal information. And we usually like to use emails to, to communicate. So when, uh, when you apply, make sure that we have your email information um, so that we can get back to you. The, um, the reviews that we do, uh, it used to be annually. We would do an annual review. Uh, the permit um, is a one-time permit, $50 fee. Uh, and again, it was an annual review. Now we do a, a review once every two years based on the amendment that we uh, passed. And for the most part, we're using aerial photography to, to do our review and, and analysis. Uh, we're using the 2017 aerials. And if we see some things, um, looking at your property and looking at how it's being used, um, if it prompts um, some interest on our part, we'll usually do a drive-by your property. Um, if we see some things uh, that doesn't look like that it would be in compliance with the home business ordinance requirements, we'll contact you 
and set up um, a meeting so that we can learn more about your operation and so we can um, have that dialogue about what the requirements are. Uh, part of the reason why we're hosting this session is when we do these annual reviews, um, what we've seen on, on more than a few occasions are um, some non-compliance issues with regard to the number of employees that uh, home business owners are having. Again, the ordinance permits whoever resides in the dwelling to operate um, and work the business plus one person. And we're seeing cases where there's more than one person um, operating the home business. Uh, we have home businesses for all uh, sorts of things. Um, we were talking a little earlier before we started. Some ordinances have a list of things that are permitted um, as far as home businesses. Ours doesn't do that. We just have limited regulations, and which is nice because it, it, it provides more flexibility for the property owners. Um, and then I think we would constantly have it, you know, be going through that process of amending the ordinance to, to, to address the, the next um, or the newest home business. Uh, so, um, in addition to the increase in the number of employees, we're seeing um, on-site storage and display, uh, which is not permitted. So, if you're a business that has that need to display or to store or store things, it should occur inside the building. The, uh, as we mentioned, the ordinance was amended in 2018, and it primarily covers two things. Um, one deals with a minimal easing of the requirements. And so if you're a business and you want to have some um, minimal amount of growth, um, you can do that with the minimal easing. There's an application that's required. Uh, it's reviewed administratively. And it's a pretty quick turnaround. But it will, would allow a home business owner to take on two additional employees um, you can have like a small storage shed for storage, and then you're, ha you're allowed to have, I think, a 500 square foot area for outside storage, provided that it's screened from the adjacent landowners and the right of way. The other thing that was amended uh, deals, deals with a substantial easing of the requirements. That's a more involved process that involves a conditional use permit process. Uh, conditional use permits are reviewed by staff but they go to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Those are seven people that are appointed by the Board of Supervisors. They review the request and make a recommendation to the Board of Adjustment. Um, so with a substantial easing of the requirement, what you need to demonstrate, though, is that you have a plan to actually leave your location and, and relocate to a location either in the county that's zoned for that use, usually that's going to be a, like a commercial light industrial zoning district, or you're going to relocate to a city that's zoned for that use. Um, our ordinance before it was amended didn't really allow, didn't have that uh, provision and flexibility built into it to allow businesses to grow. So we we're, we're trying to come up with, in working with our zoning commission, ways that we could provide that flexibility. And that's what those two amendments um, deal with. Does anybody have any questions about anything I've said so far? Sure. Um, I have a Christmas tree farm, and I haven't been to the have for years. Um, just during the holiday season, I do have, I display some trees outside the front of my shop area. You know, they're usually gone within oh, two weeks, you know. Are they, like, by your building? They're right in front of the building, yeah. Okay. They're, you know, so... Is that something that I needed a conditional use permit for? Um, it might be a good candidate for that minimal easing, um, where you could have, you know, additional outside storage. Um, so that's what we've amended the ordinance for recently to allow that kind of thing. Okay, yeah, um, because they won't, they won't, they're there for a brief period of time. Yeah. There are pre-cut trees I bring in from sure. North Carolina. Okay. For a couple months, probably. Yeah. No, not or, even. Oh, a couple okay. of weeks at the most. Okay. You, I bring them in right before mm -hmm. I open, the week before I open, which is Thanksgiving, the day mm -hmm. after Thanksgiving. Sure. And then uh, they're usually gone by the first week in December. Do you make wreaths and yes. things like that too cool. for display? I display those inside the shop normally. Okay. 
you know, or outside the shop, but then I bring them in in the evening time. So they're not there all the time. And I'm only open for business, basically, you know, for sales. Um, for From the day after Thanksgiving until the 18th of December. So it's a pretty short window of time that I'm actually open for sale. And then I have, of course, the Christmas trees that are growing in the field. You know, you know, yeah, I guess you a, consider that display or not. That's a good question, because you have the Christmas trees in the field. And then yes. <laughs> Which are natural. We, yes. we, ran, we ran into the same thing with pumpkins. Yeah, you have the pumpkins yeah, actually, in the field. Well, let's... Yeah, yeah. With regard to the display, I, Amelia, I think, hit it. It would just be the application that you would submit, the fee, and we would handle that administratively. Okay. Craig, you and what is the fee for, for that? Fifty dollars. Because that's what I paid for my business yeah. permit. So this I've already paid for my business permit. So. Um, has it recently been submitted? No, it's, it was submitted. I used to work for the county actually, but I submitted it way back when, um, in 1992. Okay, so you've been <laughs> at it for a while. Yeah. Few years. <laughs> I would say at least like your next. Oh no, seven. 98 because that's when we started planning in 92. We didn't start selling you know, until like 98. Yeah, probably then, for your next submittal, I would. We can raise that. You know, address that then. Okay. And then we would just need like a sketch I, I, showing I your so your you guess, area. When you get your next um, renewal or sooner. Okay. You could fill this part out. Okay. For a minimal easing. And, oh, thank you. Yeah, I think have an extra one. They they need it. Yeah. You want the same one? Okay. Oh, I have one. That's yeah. my question. Sure. What, what's the maximum size of outbuildings you can have? There is no restriction, which is a even good. if it's residential. Well, that you're going to have to meet the zoning requirements for setbacks, depending on the zoning district that you're in. But as far as like, if it's a 20 by 40 building. There's no limit on how much of that space you can use for your business. Um, in the A, in the A1 and A2 districts, in the AR. If you're in a residential, you you have to operate it inside your dwelling. Yeah. Do you know what your zoning district is? Do you live in a subdivision? I'm she right can pull you up the... if you want to give your address. <laughs> <laughs> we can figure it out. It's we in can... the county, but it's just north of Ames. Okay, we can we can look at it. Uh, yeah. I think it's residential, but it might be agriculture or residential. Okay. okay. Before we'll you leave, we'll look it up for you. We'll figure it out before you leave. Okay. We're gonna go through this, so maybe we do that. Yeah, go ahead. So. What's the purpose of, or what's the advantage or disadvantage of having a permit versus not having? A well, um, I didn't address it. Emily is going to. In the home business regulations, there's a provision that talks about enforcement. So if you're operating a home business and you don't have a permit, you're not in compliance with the zoning well, requirements. What's your definition of home business? Um, Other than 40, you think you said 40% less than the square footage of your home. Right, you, and you're doing something, whether it's a trade, um, you're doing something for remuneration, you're selling something. Um, we have all kinds of uh, dog daycare, contractors are probably the most common, heating, cooling, electrician, plumbers, general contractors, um, but sales. But say a person that just has the phone that goes into the home. <coughs> But your warehouses and and everything else is located at a different place that's in in city. Yeah, sometimes so it's shades of it's right. shades of gray. I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, but if you have because you have no traffic, you have no parking. Um, right. I mean, no extra parking. You have five or more employees. Yeah. If it's just you and you go somewhere else, up, they all meet at the, the warehouses and things like that. So what would be the advantage of someone like me having a home permit versus not a permit. Well, part of it is to, for us to decide whether or not you need one, right? So I've had one forever. You, what's that? You have, what is forever. your business? I have a couple of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> On the same property? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Three of them to be exact, but anyway. Okay. But it's just a phone, one phone. One phone, three businesses. And you yeah. have employees? Had at one time. Okay. Well, probably in the future too, but okay. not at this moment. No. Okay. But they're all at the 
you know, the warehouse location, which okay. is actually here in the city of Nevada, okay. but it's zoned commercial. And that's where they would be parking, and, and we have a phone there too as well. But Right. So I'm saying it, it just seems to me that, I don't know, I just see it pretty useless. Well, I mean, it's the idea is that you want to be able to fit in with your neighborhood, and some of these things really don't fit in. You, you can't do anything that's going to cause a nuisance or a hardship or be disruptive to your neighbors. And some people might live in more of a rural setting, uh, surrounded by large agricultural uh, areas. Um, but in some areas, you've got you're in like a neighborhood where you've got neighbors close, and you can have a negative impact on them. So um, the idea is that the telephone is going to be a negative impact. I'm not saying that. I'm just speaking in general. I'm not talking okay. specifically about your business. Okay. I'm just I'm, talking I'm just about in general what the intent really of the ordinance. I'm just talking about what the intent of the ordinance is, okay. and it's, it's, it seeks to strike a balance and, 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 and tries to find harmony so that you can live and work and operate a business with limited requirements um, and that it blend in and work with your neighbors. So, I mean, that's what it tries to accomplish. But so. I've, I've had the permit forever, but I just don't really see a need of it because I've never used it for anything. Right. Other than the phone, you know, being switched from one location to the other. What is the, the what's the business? Or is it a, se is it a secret? <laughs> no, it's not a secret, yeah. but no, it's just and a couple different businesses. You know, I think okay. we might just be good to set up a meeting and figure out, do you need one? What do you do there? And what do you do off-site? Do you have future growth plans that maybe it would be beneficial to keep it in case you grow and employees do come to your house if your business They would is never grow? do that. I mean, so I, never I think it would be good house. if we sat down and figured out, you know, do you need one? Yeah. Handle case by case. Yeah. Like special. Yeah. Case like. Absolutely. Uh -huh. What's that? Hey, there should be a provision for a special situation like you have. Let them review it and tell tell you then. Go from there. Yeah. I'm assuming at some point somebody from the planning and development department said that you needed one based on information that you provided to them. Nope. So why? I guess why do you have one? We called and asked if we needed one. They, they, and they probably the based said, on the information. You know, for what you're using it for, probably not, but it would be a good idea to have one mm -hmm. in case you ever decide to okay. mm -hmm. grow. But we've always had other buildings and other properties where the businesses are mm -hmm. okay. that it's just a, more or less a phone, you know, from switching from day phone to night phone, you know, if we get emergency calls or something like that. We you use your part of your house. Do you have an office in your house? One room. Keep files and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like a basement office. And that's what some of them are. They're just internet based, or they have one office, or maybe it's you know an attorney or an insurance salesperson. So it's somewhat relates, but we can talk about the specifics before you leave. If that's okay. That's fine. But okay. Yeah, I was just wondering why I, would, yeah. I really need. I mean, as I said, I renew it every year. Mm -hmm. So, okay. That's just Any that. other questions? Before we go into the regulations, okay, go ahead. Okay, um, so I'm going to just talk through the specific regulations that we have in our ordinance for home business permits. Um, the intent of the home business permit, which um, <laughs> are the home business ordinance, <laughs> is to allow limited commercial activity uh, in a residential dwelling. Um, there must be a dwelling on the site, and one uh, property owner must, or, and one. Uh, someone that lives in the dwelling must be running the business. Um, home businesses, uh, as we discussed, do require permits um, in Story County. Uh, some businesses are better suited for um, permitting under what we have a Story County in Story County called the Agritourism Ordinance. Um, these are businesses that uh, bring the general public to the site to educate them on a an agricultural process. Um, and so if that's your specific case, um, we can discuss it later. Uh, I'm not going to go too much into that right now, but we can definitely talk about it afterwards. Oops. Sorry. So um, then the standards for approval, um, the home business should provide a service or a product. Uh, one person living in the dwelling must be uh, employed at the home business. And the home business shall not use more than 49% of the dwelling. Um, so that, that 
ensures that the primary use of the dwelling is for residential use. Um, alternatively, in the A1 or A2 districts, um, we do uh, allow, oh, I'm sorry, A1, A2, and AR uh, agricultural residential districts, we do allow um, one accessory building to be used for the home business. Again, it's just one structure um, outside of the home to be used. Uh, let's see, home businesses are uh, permitted uh, one employee living outside the dwelling. Um, they, these uses should not create um, nuisance like odor, gas, dust, um, noise. Um, basically, your neighbor shouldn't know that it's taking place. Again, uh, one employee is permitted. In terms of service vehicles, um, in the A1 district, you're permitted up to two service vehicles that to, can be parked on, on your property. Um, in the AR, the more AR, the R1 and the R2 zoning districts, which are the more residential districts, um, service vehicles are required to be located inside of a, of a building to be uh, screened from uh, the right of way and other properties. So no outdoor storage or display of products uh, shall be permitted. Uh, the traffic generated by the home business permit uh, shall not exceed six trips per day per person living in the household. Um, so that's, uh, this is interpreted to um, mean the combination of all trips coming to and from the household. Um, and we can maybe speak a little bit more to the more seasonal uses um, in a minute, but um, so if you have four people living in your household, um, the total trips to and from uh, for personal trips and then also for the business uh, should not exceed about 24, 24 uh, trips. Uh, the home business permit shall not have a negative impact on surrounding properties in terms of value. Uh, if you want to have a sign for your business, any proposed signage just requires a sign permit from our office uh, and must meet the, si the sign requirements in our ordinance. Uh, in terms of parking and circulation, um, if the general public's coming to your house, that will obviously trigger a need for parking on your site. Um, we do require um, all home businesses to have an ADA compliant space. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's paved, it just needs to be a sturdy surface um, with signage and then um, close, to, close to the entrance of your, your home business. Uh, if you have any lighting, um, that must meet our, our standards in Story County. Um, typically that just means that the lighting is blocked from going above the horizontal plane, so it's, it's angled downward onto the site. Um, is to prevent light trespass. Um, so then, the last thing we're going to talk about here is um, we have a section that uh, allows conditions to be associated with your home business permit. So if uh, staff feels that there's going to be um, odor or dust or smoke or cinders and there's a reasonable um, condition that can be put on the use minimize that for uh, neighboring property owners, um, that would be uh, attached as a condition of the home business permit. Okay. Um, so then um, here's a, an image of the home business permit uh, application. We do, um, there's just standard information, property owner name, applicant once in a while. Um, we do have renters who want to apply for a home business permit. Um, we would require the property owner to sign the, the application at that time. Um, so for a new home business permit, uh, we do require a $50 filing fee, uh, the site development plan showing, as Jerry said, uh, the layout of the property, um, showing the uh, parking area and so forth, depending on your specific business. Um, if your business is located within your dwelling, showing where in the dwelling, how much space is going to be taken up by the home business. And then we do require a narrative to um, 
show us that you're going to be conforming to the uh, requirements. And so as a part of your narrative, um, questions should be answered such as, what service, pro what service or product will your business be offering? Uh, will the business activities be inside the dwelling, inside the accessory structure? Uh, will the business produce any odor, gas, dust, uh, noise, so on? Um, how many people will be employed at the home business? How many service vehicles are associated with it? Uh, will any products be stored or displayed outside? Um, will the business, the home business increase traffic to the site? And then um, will the general public be coming to your property? Um, uh, and then also if you're proposing any signs or lighting um, changes from basic from your from the from what you have existing on your Iowa residence. So Amelia is going to go through the um, now that we've kind of talked through those uh, regulations more specifically, Amelia's going to talk about um, the provisions recently adopted for easing some of those requirements. <coughs> okay, so I'm going to talk about first the minimal easing of the requirements. Um, so this is in the case that you know you've been meeting the standards and we just discussed for a year, but you'd like to grow a little bit. So for instance, you'd like to add additional employees or outside storage or a small shed uh, to put some of your products in. Then you could apply for a minimal easing of our home business standards. Um, the review would be so you'd submit an application administratively, just like your home business permit application. You, it's the box next to home business. Um, and you'd also submit what you're proposing to be these, so what specific standard, whether that's you know increasing the number of employees or outside storage, and then um, you've also provide a narrative on why and any potential impacts that might have. I think the crux of the review criteria is that your proposal to ease the standards won't create a noticeable change or be objectionable or create a nuisance for your neighbors. It's still within the condition that exists with your home business permit. It's not a major change. Um, and so, again, an example would be 500 square feet of outside storage that's screened or buffered or employees. That's not a huge noticeable change to your business. It just allows you to grow a little bit after you've been in compliance for a year. Um, the next type of easing is more significant. So we have a significant easing of requirements in the case that it's more substantial growth. So again, if you've been in compliance with the standards for a year um, and you need to grow beyond what would be minimal, um, so beyond two employees, more employees than that, have more outside storage, um, the significant easing allows you to temporarily grow and then submit a transition plan to find an area that's zoned commercial that may be a better location, a more compatible location for your business. The transition plan allows you to grow for three years prior to transitioning to a different location. Instead of an administrative process to approve that plan, you submit a conditional use permit application that is approved by our Board of Adjustment. We do have some, um, we have some flow charts up here about what that process looked like, if anybody's interested. Um, and we do have an application as well. Um, but you'd submit um, a narrative on essentially how your proposal is still compat compatible with the area that you're located in. And compatibility or Regarding environmental protection, you know, parking, is there adequate transition if you're growing your parking area, um, and lighting and those kinds of things. You may also modify your permit um, to allow two additional years of transition if necessary. So if you plan to move after three years and you need two additional years, you can go back to the Board of Adjustment and request that as well. Um, so that's the significant easing. And then I'm also going to talk about changes to our review process just for your typical home business permit. Um, so maybe some of you have received your renewal notices for 2019 by now. If, um, 
Okay, great. So if you've renewed the net code this year, you'll receive your next renewal notice in 2021. So it won't be annual anymore. If you have a review this year, um, already received it this year, you will still, and then you won't receive your next until 2021. So we're on a two-year schedule now. Um, and then finally, this last section you'll find on your ordinance is just about what happens if there's a violation of our standards. And our goal is always to have help you and work with you voluntarily comply with the standards. And you know that's part of why we've introduced these easing to the standards as well. So we have more tools in our toolbox to work with you, um, home business owners. So those are the new parts of the ordinance that we just amended in 2018.
going to have the applicable standards of a home business permit limiting the number of employees or um, the outside storage, which could be a benefit if you have grown or would want to grow. Mm -hmm. Conference of plan is a big part of what we do. 
we review the like development applications for these zones, conditional use permits, air tourism, and conditional use permits. Zoning permit applications, requests for vacating of like, right of way, road name changes. We work pretty closely with Ames and Gilbert. Um, Ames are the French plan for development request to the two of them. And then, plus, we have a thing called a work program. Every year, we meet with the Planning and Zoning Commission and the Board of Supervisors to come up with special projects, which are outside the day to day things that we do. Um, and that keeps us pretty busy. We usually take on 20, 25 uh, special projects. That, uh, so, if we're not working on a development application, we uh, have a special project. Uh, so, we're still um, we serve the Planning and Zoning Commission, um, and then ultimately the Board of Supervisors. I think we were called Planning and Zoning, that was Planning and Development. Appreciate you guys coming. Thank you for your interest. Um, we'd be happy to talk to you further about your individual questions. So thanks for coming. Thank you.